Hi, Eric here from Laser Scanning TV. This is the May session. I find some interesting news for all friends of terrestrial laser scanners and 3D scanner hardware. There is some major announcement from last week, some new stuff, new systems. And we have also other topics. Stay tuned if you're interested. What is the hottest shit on the market? Let us start with Slam Scanners. We have German company Nevis. Uh, they announced a new version of the VLX series. On the name is VLX3. We have it here in the picture. The new one is or different is, from my understanding, it's they have now uh, two new laser sensors. And I think they've written this here also in this article. They have now these two. These, you know, they, the system have two uh, sensors. One is horizontal laser, and then they have the vertical lasers. And the new one have now 32 layer. And the old one had only 16 layers. Also we have double layers in each scanner, means double of point clouds. It's, I think they definitely changed the sensor, what they are using. Uh, I don't know, uh, the old one I think was uh, Velodyne. I'm not sure if they already stays with Velodyne or if they move to another provider of their sensor. I don't have any information yet to this topic. But we see here they have a very good dense point cloud now. This is a big advantage, especially if you scan outdoor like we see it here. And also here, this point gap picture shows you it is really dense data for a SLAM scanner, but it's pretty good. And they also say that they have a reduced point cloud noise. I don't know, it is more precise as the older one uh, because I don't have any more detailed information yet. Uh, maybe we take later a bigger look inside what some people say. It is definitely better point cloud quality, more points. But also on the other hand, you have more points to handle. Yeah, you have twice scanner deliver a lot of data uh, maybe uh, it is especially if you have these onboard processing in the cloud maybe that is an, a little bit challenging if you have double data but this was only what some people know me double data it's uh, more to handle uh, but i don't know what this means in practical sense let us move forward to terrestrial scanners we have now also trimble announced a new tripod scanner the name is x9 also from the x series we have here the previous version, the previous version was the X7. It's not looking them so different. There are some changing in the color. You know, they're coming from uh, having this yellow side panel. Now it's only some yellow stripes from the outside. I think the rest looks pretty similar to me. Uh, but there should be something different in the laser sensor. They are also working on sensors. This is the big upgrade here. We can see it direct here in the data sheet. The old one had maximum speed 500,000 measurement per second and the new one have up to 1 million, also they double the speed. And then some achievements, also they have a longer range now. Old system have a maximum range from um, was 80 meters and the new one have 150 meters. You see here 150, here we had 80s. And they tell with the new speed that they also can measurement faster, but there is a little bit difference here if you compare this with the other ones. It's uh, the old one, they had standard and high sensitivity, they call them. And if you're looking here for a scan with like five millimeter resolution uh, in 10 meters, what is pretty practical, then you have 58 million points. You had these three minutes. And if you go to high sensitive for maybe uh, complex uh, surfaces, then you had six, uh, around seven minutes with the old system and the new one now allows to you with the five millimeter 3.3 have now a little bit more points and if you go to high speed then you have only four millimeters then they have 3.115 make about then 100 million points or you can go down a little bit to 27 then you need 1.27 in the high speed mode maybe in high speed mode is the Accuracy not the same good, I don't know, I don't have any information yet to that. And they have also a special indoor mode, it's new, it's only one minute, but they have 15 millimeter point spacing. That's normally okay for very small rooms, but for larger room, I think it's this not the best resolution to capture rooms, but it is like small offices or something that maybe works because you have only 7 million points. Yeah. If you're going with this, it's a little bit less as the competition, but there you can compare. They have two minutes and then here they have 1.27. And then additionally, you have this um, picture, um, time for pictures. It's uh, fast as uh, one minute and HDR three minutes or six minutes. The HDR modes, they have very uh, survey grade positioning in the system and the range accuracy is two millimeter. This is not so different like we have here 2.5. 
And also here the SVD point accuracy is a little bit better now in the newer system as in the older one, but the sub-millimeter points, I think that's something more for if you're working in the laboratory, it's in, I don't know if it makes so many practical sense, but you see, uh, or my conclusion is it's an update to have giving the customer the option to have more speed to coming closer to the direct competition, what is like a RTC or Faro uh, Focus Premium. They already have two million points and now they are going to like one million points to be closer to their competition. Now this means up to, yeah, it's every time each of them is up to this measurement to be um, closer, I think, from the speed. This is definitely a market uh, need, um, having faster scanners. And now Trimble also allowed for their customer having now a faster scanner in their portfolio. Next candidate is from the camera market is uh, from uh, producer phase one. They have the X1 SP150 as a phase one space hearted camera. Uh, I think it's developed for uh, uh, spatial applications. And they have in one shot, they're making shots with 150 megapixel each shot. And this should be uh, observation and space application also for the guys there they are interested in this. Then we go more back to our usually market. And there was also an announcement here from company LIDAR Hexagon. And they give us a new system here. The name of the system is the TRK100 is the name. And I uh, was saying, what is now different from this system to this system what we already know it, the Pegasus, call them also TRK, but the other name is Neo. We have it here and there's two options. I have to be careful because of my German presentation. Here's so many uh, cool stuff here on the Leica website, but this already crashed my laptop by presentation with, I don't know, screen capturing. Here we have this, uh, this was uh, the 700 Neo system and this one is the new one, the 100. And if you are very good with your observation, you see where's here the difference. I can tell this, the difference is here in the uh, sensor heads. We have a du dual sensor here. We have also a dual sen sensor here, but you see that's a complete different system. Here we speak as a scanner with, it's like an, a Teledyne optic integration in their system. And they have here on this system, and they have also these smaller scanners here in front. They have up to 1 million measurements in the dual head uh, configuration, having a very precise uh, a system here from post-processing like RTK processing but also this uh, sensor is pretty precise uh, laser here and the new one it's a little bit less also from the G GPS points there is no information really to the sensors because this is like um, something like in Velodyne or in Hessai this typical system as many companies now using from these uh, I think it's maybe a well done book what they have here as integration. The idea is having a system with the highest kind of sensors, like a little bit uh, uh, entry market sensor systems. And then you can also deliver the system for a lower price for the customer who maybe don't need these uh, super, super, super accurate scanner. They can live with a scanner was maybe have an accuracy from 20 millimeters. And the Teledyne, they have maybe five millimeters or something range accuracy. I think that's the difference, a little bit less GPS accuracy. I think it definitely goes to this uh, application is the mapping market and not this high tech engineering market. I think that's, that's the application for this new system from Leica. Then I find something also from the software sites is a system from, uh, I think it's a um, company from uh, service provider, Cesium, they call them, and they have an integration with uh, Google Maps. They use this to rendering photo, uh, um, photorealistic images. And we see this, they um, imported their, they have the Google Maps as platform, then they have uh, using an API, and then they can deliver it to this different kind of engines to show them. I don't know if we can check out here some videos. Hope for me that's not crashing my computer again. So we have here some uh, uh, music stuff. Ah, and then we can see it here. Yeah, here we can see some examples um, from this photorealistic viewer. So this looks really amazing for people that need this kind of information. That's like really a dig digital twin of the this, uh, of the Earth. Uh, I don't know where the data come from. This looks like for me like photographic pictures, but here if you query mine, uh, that's just an Unreal Engine. Also this uh, integration allows the customer uh, to having very good uh, presentation of uh, their geospatial data. Um, that's pretty good. 
Yeah, and to the end we come uh, to this uh, accessory topic, and there we go in our shop, and there we ha I have here some some uh, new stuff in our shop. It's this uh, 360 degrees lightning what we offer to the market, also uh, what we have new in the program. It's uh, this is usable for ferro scanner and also for Leica RTC scanners. Then we have the same system. It's also available for a BLK to go. Um, and then we have also now for people they're buying handhelds, uh, these um, um, entry market GPS solution from MLED. We offer them also now uh, uh, these handheld systems that you can run your app on a more rugged uh, tablet for outside or phone. Uh, this is very new. Then we have also this backpack for BLK to go and a lot of retro reflected targets here, a big option here. And uh, finally, I got this inf from information from my uh, colleagues. We have also now the uh, newer backpack version. This is available also for the Faro Focus Premium. There's a special adapter in, I don't know if we have here some pictures. I think yeah, that's a new one, now this Focus S. But uh, we have definitely a version where you can order is for your premium scanner. Here we see it here. And I think with uh, backpack is a good topic for me to close these main news. Then I can put my laptop in my backpack and I can leave. I'm happy like every time that you uh, join this episode this time. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, uh, give me a thumb up. Uh, have, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Bye-bye, uh, Eric. -bye.